higher the penetrating power of a shell, the thicker the armor needs to be to stop that shell. The thicker the armor, the higher the penetrating power of that shell needs to be to go through it, and on it goes. But not forever. As early as the 1960s, when the world saw the first shells capable of penetrating 400 millimeters of steel armor, tank manufacturers were forced to adapt to find new ways to protect their vehicles. One of the solutions came in the form of composite armor. Basically, a type of vehicle armor consisting of layers of different material. It was just as sturdy as conventional armor, but much, much lighter. Here's an example. What you see here is the armor face taken from the Soviet T-64, the first production tank with composite armor. It consists of a couple of steel layers and glass reinforced plastic sandwiched between them that helps to defeat high explosive anti-tank rounds, just like that. And if you think that's fancy, in the turret there were special inserts made from extra sturdy steel that served the very same purpose. A second answer to the same problem is explosive reactive armor. This kind of armor consists of a slab or slabs of high explosive and thin metal plates. The idea is simple. When attacked by a penetrating weapon, the explosive detonates forcibly driving the metal plates apart to damage the penetrator. As a result, the shaped charged jet is disrupted. It has to cut through more material to get to the target, and much, if not all, of its penetrating power is lost. Now it's time for the most interesting part. Let's see how all of that works in our game. As you can see, both composite and reactive armor provide superior protection against HEAT attack, but are defeated by shells of other types. That's why it's a good idea to know how well every type of ammunition at your disposal works against different types of enemy armor and carry a few different rounds at all times. There is another important thing to consider. The dynamic elements of reactive armor effectively disappear after they have served their purpose. That's how they work. So, if an opponent manages to land another hit on the place he or she has struck before, the second shell will interact with armor in the usual fashion. You won't have that extra protection anymore. Furthermore, the elements of reactive armor can be shot off or blown off by high-caliber machine gun fire, HE or even AP shells. The result is the same, no extra protection in afflicted spots. You also have to remember that different countries have their own ideas of what composite armor should consist of, and these ideas change throughout the times, usually more than once. The materials used in the production of this armor included metals, plastics, ceramics, and different ones at that, and even air. Take the T-64 for example. There were so many variants of the same thing that it's hard to keep count. We tell you this because our goal is to model all these nuances in our game as well.